Hi kids! Today we will learn about pollination and fertilization in plants. So let's start. We learned that all living beings reproduce. That is, all living things give birth to the same kind. And similarly, plants too reproduce their own kind. And most of the plants reproduce through seeds. That is, they produce seeds which when it germinates and produces a new plant. Let's see how these seeds are produced. We learnt the structure of a flower in our last assignment. This is pedicel, which is a green color stalk. Then this broader part is a receptacle. And all other parts are arranged in four walls. Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects. The first world is of green sepals. Second is colorful petals. Third is stamens, which is the male reproductive part. Fourth is carpal or pistil which is the female reproductive part. Stamen consists of a long stalk called filament and a swollen head called anther. It consists of numerous very small pollens, which are male reproductive cells. Pistil consists of a sticky structure called stigma attached to a long tube-like structure called style. And style ends in a swollen part called ovary, and this ovary contains the female reproductive cells, ovules. When pollens from the anther of stamen joins with the ovules present in the ovary, we call it fertilization. Let's revise. When pollens from the anther of stamen joins with the ovules present in the ovary, it is called fertilization and fertilization forms the seeds inside the ovary. And after fertilization, this ovary changes into a fruit. That's why seeds are there inside the fruit. Now let's see what is pollination. Pollination is a process by which pollen is transferred from the anther, that is, the male part, to the stigma which is the female part of the plant, thereby enabling the fertilization and reproduction in turn. Now let's see how pollination occurs or how pollens reach stigma. There are various ways. How do pollens reach the stigma? Flowers have bright petals and strong fragrance that attract insects, and other animals. Also, flowers have thin nutritious honey like liquids called nectar inside of them that acts as food for many insects. Butterflies, bees, and many other insects feed on the nectar. So they visit the flower to suck nectar. While sucking nectar from the flowers, they are in no way harmed by the insects. Insects and insects feed on the nectar present in the flowers. Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects. And while doing so, the pollens from the anther gets attached to the body of the insects. And when these insects visit some other flower for nectar, pollens get to the sticky top of the pistils. And by the way, of long tubes called style. Pollens reach the ovary where ovules are present and fertilization occurs 
leading to the formation of seeds. So this process of pollens reaching the sticky tops of pistils is called pollination. And pollens may reach to the stigma of the same flower or stigma of different flowers. When pollens reach the stigma of the same flower, it is called self-pollination. And when pollens reach the stigma of different flowers of the same kind, it's called cross-pollination. So kids, we now know what is fertilization and what is pollination. Now we will learn about different agents of pollination. Insects like bees, butterflies, beetles, etc. are the main agents of pollination. Birds and mammals too pollinate some flowers. Wind also acts as an agent of pollination. Water too acts as an agent of pollination. So kids, today we learned about fertilization and pollination. Now go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye!